Hey, City Rev family, welcome to the City Rev Live podcast. If you found yourself here, we want to say welcome. Each week on this podcast, we feature content and conversations that help strengthen your relationship with God and others and equip you to make a difference right where you are. For this summer, we're doing a bit of a throwback series in which we're featuring conversations from previous podcast episodes. Now, we've condensed them a bit to give you just the very best from each of these episodes. We hope this conversation you're going to hear today encourages you in your personal growth and your unique faith journey. And hey, if this conversation is something you enjoy, let us know. We would love to hear from you. Send us a DM on our social media platforms. We'd love your feedback and to hear how this has helped shape this season for you. Enjoy this episode and we'll talk soon, fam. No, but we are talking about dating. I'm pumped for this. And uh, I think it's important to first describe what we mean by when we say the one. Yes. Yes. So Mandy, tell us, you, you know what we're talking about. When we say the one, what are we talking about? Yeah, we're talking about the one that you have married. Yes. And that kind of is a bummer <laughs> to say that because um, we've been talking a lot about the romantic idea of the one. Right. And how, you know, recent, more modern rom-coms. Yes, have romantic really, comedies. Yeah, have really romanticized this idea. That's right. Of the one person for you. Yes. So we're going to kind of break this down a little bit. I think it's important for us... Um, to put dating in its historical context. So um, dating and what we experience with dating is actually a relatively new invention in human history. Um, Courtships were common before then, but more popular in the world just a few centuries ago was, um, was arranged marriages. In fact, there are still millions of people that get married every year um, that are through arranged marriages. And I think that's significant because if we build our entire view of love and even try and build as Christians a theology of the one uh, while neglecting the fact that uh, dating itself is something that's relatively new in human history, there are millions of people who get married, people who are Christians who get married via arranged marriages. And so our definition, our understanding of what God wants for us in marriage can't be made in such a way that it excludes people who are in arranged marriages. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm grateful that we live in a society and culture where you you get to date. Me too. And you have some more agency. I I love my parents. I think they would have done a great job, but uh, (laughs) that's a fun thought, right? (laughs) It's not. Fun is one word. Fun is one word. That's for sure. All right. But we're going to talk about the nature of life in our culture. I think the other thing that's important to talk about is the romantic comedy theory of the one it's just not biblical. So we were talking, I think, Mandy, you brought up about this idea of being incomplete or feeling like you're looking for your other half. You're one half and you're yeah. looking for your other half. What what's you? What was your take on how that's so problematic? Yeah. So I think that's, um, it does feel very romantic. And I think that's why it's been, been, been such a popular term mm-hmm. um, to say like, I found my other half or uh, this person completes me. But the reality is what that's actually saying is that unless you have found that person, you are walking around incomplete. That's right. Or not whole, Mm -hmm. which is not biblical. That's right. God makes us complete. Jesus makes us whole and lacking nothing. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's it's a it feels romantic to say, but I think it's unhelpful and it's actually not grounded um, yeah. in truth. And I think sometimes people say it kind of harmlessly, you know, my other half, and we kind of just mean yeah. it tongue in cheek or in that way. But if you start to really take down, like, if you're a single person or even if you're a married person and you view yourself as incomplete without this person, you're putting a weight on that spouse or yeah. on that person that they're just not able to bear. Jesus is who makes us whole. He makes us complete. The picture in the Bible is not that we're one half and the other person completes our incompleteness. The picture is that we complement one another. It's that there are certain weaknesses in us that someone could be brought in our life that brings strength to bear on those and helps us in those ways. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's unhelpful is this this idea of soulmate, uh, that, that idea. Again, sometimes we say it um, loosely. We don't really think it through. But I think implied in that idea of a soulmate as someone who, you know, you're your soul was with them before you were born and you're going to end up with them after you die, you know, as soul soulmates in that way. What that implies is that there's this one person out there and the burden is on you to find that one person. 
And so you might be in a relationship or in a marriage, let's say, and it, things are going bad and it's potential to start thinking down the line, well, maybe this just isn't my soulmate. Mm, maybe, yeah. maybe I found the wrong one. This is not the, the one, one for me. Yeah. And so that type of soulmate thinking, could you lead you down a, a decision to leave a hard marriage thinking that there's someone else out there for you that's your true one? And that's just not a biblical way of viewing marriage and relationship. Yeah, that's really good. So what we're going to do today is with that context, we're going to be providing um, you with a couple questions. We're actually going to frame this in question form yeah. on a couple questions that help uh, whoever's dating or whoever feels like they're ready for that next step of um, a possibility of marriage yeah. to be thinking through and help to navigate whether this person is the one that you're going to marry. Yeah, that's right. Um, but before we start that, we did want to we did want to do like a quick disclaimer. Yeah. On, we're not going to be talking so much about attraction in these questions, yeah. but obviously that's a big one yeah. um, that a lot of people would ask, like, what about attraction? Does it have to do with right. the person that you marry? So what would you say about that? Yeah, I would say first and foremost, uh, attraction is something that's important. Uh, it's not something to completely ignore. At the same time, physical attraction is not everything. And we have elevated attraction in our culture, in our time. And different cultures have different priorities in terms of attraction. Um, but I think the, the way that you put it, you thought of this example of a house. Why don't you share that? Because I think that helps explain what we mean by that. Yeah. So um, actually, I can't take credit for this. This was the amazing and wise Dan Gossett um, in a conversation. Shout with out, him. Pastor Dan. Shout out. Whoop, whoop. Um, he kind of put it like this. You know, when a person is looking to invest in a house, to buy a house, um, that is a really large investment financially. That's a really important decision. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at properties, you have to kind of consider and weigh out a couple different things about the property to figure out this is what you want to purchase. So there are things to consider that would be considered aesthetic parts of this property. This includes when you walk in, this is the paint color. Um, this includes what the lawn looks like. This yeah, landscaping. Landscaping, you know, things like that. These are things that you're able to change and can change over time. Um, right. But then there's other things to consider when purchasing a property. Right. So this is going to be the bones of your house. Um, this is going to be the structure of your house. This is going to be uh, how big your property is. This could be where it's positioned in the neighborhood or what street it's on. Mm -hmm. um, and so these are things that pretty much will never change. These That's are right. things that come with your property when you purchase it. These are the things that are right. kind of like are kind of essentially forever there. Yeah. And so what we're going to be doing with this conversation is we're going to be working through like there are things about the pro and not to say that they're your property people but I are mean, not property people are not property <laughs> let's just say that it's a metaphor um, it's a metaphor for you know deciding if this person is a good fit for marriage is like there are things like hobbies or the way a person looks the way a person dresses yeah um things like that that will change over time and ages and seasons mm -hmm. um but there are things about a person that are pretty like cemented and yeah. these have to do with the Longer heart and the character and the faith of that person so that's right that's what we're going to be exploring yeah today um so real estate advice don't buy a home because you like the paint color that's true uh, you know that can change quickly so that's that's the example we're giving and so these questions that we're going to lay out if you are someone who is thinking about dating currently in a dating relationship you have a a child who's dating have a friend who's dating hopefully these are helpful for you and just want to say you know scripture tells us proverbs 18 proverbs chapter 18 verse 23 that the person who finds a spouse finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Marriage is a good thing. And so hopefully these questions help guide you and, and make you think about the relationship you're potentially going to be in, the relationship you're currently in, and it's just a helpful guide. So first one, Mandy, why don't you kick us off, the first question to toss around. Yeah, so this one's really fun because please bear with me. Don't make fun of me here. This is a little cheesy, okay? okay, and it rhymes. But it'll help you remember. It'll help you remember, and it rhymes, so it's it's the best. Um, so the first question to ask yourself when considering somebody for marriage is, do they have what's called mission ambition? Okay? Mission ambition. Here's simply put, if you consider yourself a Jesus follower and take seriously the call of Jesus, that means that you are seeking to honor Jesus in every area of your life. Yeah. So your faith should infiltrate 
all the decisions that you're making in your life. That's right. And so if that is something that is top priority for you mm -hmm. and your value system and your faith system is something that informs the rest of your life, you it would be absolutely wise to look for somebody that also shares in that faith yeah. and that value system and is looking to make decisions considering Jesus. Um, and so this is so important because um, and there's definitely that thought, and I've seen it a million times, Justin, where it's yeah. like, okay, well, they don't currently have a great relationship with mm. Jesus, but they're definitely open to coming to church. Yes. Right? And we call that missionary dating. Yes. <laughs> where you're like dating to convert the person. Yeah. And listen, I ain't saying that's not, that can't happen. Yeah. Jesus can do anything. That's right. But it's not super wise yeah, because then right. their faith is based on, um, you know, them just kind of trying to please you, trying to please right. you. And if I want to be in a relationship with you, this is what I have to do. So these are the works that I have to get done. That's um, right. and so we don't recommend that. Um, but it is incredibly important. Um, well, we want to read this scripture, um, really quickly, just because we always want to provide scripture with what we're saying. Um, second Corinthians six fourteen says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness. So this author is basically saying, are these things making sense? They're kind of opposite. That's not going to work. You know, in the same way that you as a Jesus follower partners up for the rest of your life with another person that doesn't share that, that mm -hmm. faith system, that's probably not going to work. And, um, you know, you want to think, you want to think long-term on that too. Yeah. So you want to think this, if you're entering into marriage, that is hopefully a marriage that's going to last you forever. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you want to think about long-term how you handle money in your marriage, mm -hmm. how you think about finances, what you invest in, um, just the philosophy of money, where that sits in your life. You yeah. want to think about how you're going to raise your kids. Um, mm -hmm. what all you're gonna, things that your faith is at the core of I how mean, you make decisions. all these things, relationship with other people, yes. the goals that you make in life yeah. are all going to be informed by your faith. So needless to say, and Justin, you did say something really interesting the other day. You said, simply put, here's the question to ask yourself. Yeah. You said, will growing closer to this person help me grow closer to God? Yeah. And I think that's a really wise question to ask yourself by yourself and let yeah. the Holy Spirit speak to you mm -hmm. about that relationship is as I grow closer to this person, am I also being influenced to grow closer to Jesus? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really important question to be asking yourself. So obviously, I feel like that's kind of num number one into yes. considering that person forever. That's the starting point. That's right. So if you're a Christian, then the most important thing about you is that you are a Christ follower. That means that Jesus has changed your life, that you're living your life to, to honor him. And so if the most important thing about you that guides every other area of your life is off is completely different than the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. You're setting yourself up for hurt, for trouble. Now, if you're already married, if you're a person who's married and you're, um, you know, your spouse is not a believer and you are, Scripture's clear that, um, that you're to remain together, to pray for your spouse, love them, serve them. But if you're dating and considering That's marriage, a good point. Yeah. there's not just wisdom, like Mandy shared, in, um, in, choosing to marry someone who shares your faith. It's also a biblical command. Yeah, it's 2 Corinthians 6, it's a command. Don't be unequally yoked. Don't put yourself under, that's a picture of like a, of a, an ox being bound together and having to go in the same direction as, you know, another ox that are plowing a field. But don't, don't associate in that depth of a relationship to commit yourself in marriage to someone who shares a different oh, faith than that's, you do. Oh, that's also cool what you just said thank you for clarifying that that it's not a suggestion that's right it's a command that's right yeah, do not be unequally good. yoked Thanks with unbelievers that. to give them the your spouse is the person who's going to have the most influence on your life yeah and that would certainly be something that would um, fall under the command of that verse yeah for sure so what's the the next question that sure. we should be asking ourselves so the first one is about faith the next one's about character so the question that we want to raise is does their character demonstrate integrity does their character demonstrate integrity? It's a really important question. I love um, 1 Peter chapter 3. This hits on the attraction question as well. It puts it in a really helpful light. He says, Your beauty should not come from outward adornments such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, 
It should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. I love that that phrase. There's unfading beauty in a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Uh, exterior beauty is fading. It's going to be fading for all of us. Inner beauty is something that gets more beautiful as time goes on, as we become more and more like Christ. And so does that person's inner self, does their character demonstrate, uh, does it demonstrate integrity? I think there's a lie that sometimes people believe that things will get better once we get married. And so people will be dating and they'll notice some red flags that they convince themselves are yellow flags about their character, about their trustworthiness, about their honesty, uh, about the things that they do. And you assume, well, just things will get better once we get married. And if anything, things get worse when you get married. Because when you're dating, people are on their best behavior. Uh, people are trying to make sure they put their best foot forward. Once you get it's married... Like interview time. <laughs> sure. Once you get married... People like, all right, I mean, we're in this thing. Like, what are you going to do about it yeah. uh, type, type of situation? So I think that's a very important question for us to wrestle with. Do, do they demonstrate integrity? Do they, is it someone you admire and respect their character? Um, and then you, you talked about connection and the relationships they have with others and how that yeah. fits with in- integrity as well. Yeah, I think a, a really good um, thing to look for in a serious relationship is what is their connection with other people? Um, do they have, like, what does their crew look like? Mm -hmm. Who are they hanging with? You know? Um, and you know, everybody has various friendships, but what I mean is like, do they have people in their life that can attest to their character, that can attest to their, what Justin said, trustworthiness, um, um, being a good friend, being somebody that is loyal, being somebody that shows up, um, being someone that's true to their word. What do their friends have to say about them? Um, what do others in their family have to say about their character? Uh, the, this is really important to, to look for in their connections with other people. Yeah. And, and within that c- character, integrity comes humility, comes the ability to be uh, teachable. How do they handle confrontation? Is it like that they get super defensive the moment? They're yeah, unable to take one. criticism? Are they demonstrating pride in that they, they're never wrong? They're always right? Those are the character things we have to be thinking through. Yeah, or willing to listen to what you have to say, even if it's hard for them. Yes. You know. All right, That's the really third good. one I think that we should hit on is a really, uh, I think, important question. This was a late addition to um, our podcast but a discussion. a very needed one, yeah. Yeah, but is what do other people who know me and love me the most have to say about this person? What do the people that know me and love Oof. me the most... That's that have good, good intentions uh, and people that I trust. What do they say about this person or our current relationship? Uh, the reality is we have blind spots. And there is nothing like the blinding that happens when you're infatuated with a new relationship. They yep. can do no wrong. They're perfect. And if someone else calls something out or they say, hey, what do you think about this? This kind of sounds, this looks a little bit strange. I don't know about this person's this. There's this temptation to say, well, you don't know them like I know them. Yes. Or you don't <laughs> know how they are with me that's or, right. you know, that's, that's, yes. I yeah, that's that. huge. And we have blind spots. We have to know that. So if the people closest to us that we know and love that have our best intentions at heart are cautioning us and yeah. trying to help get our attention, I mean, we need to be inviting that feedback. We need to be yeah. going to those people and saying, hey, I need you to be honest with me. Yes. Because we are going to default to thinking they can do no wrong. Yes. Oh, that's so good. That's such a sign, I feel like, of maturity to come to somebody that knows you and say, like, hey, what do you think about this relationship? Yes. Um, because they do know you a lot. People know you a lot better than you that's think. Right. You know, your family and your friends yeah. um, know you and they'll say, no, I really don't think this is a good you know, option for you. Yeah. It is wise yeah. to take that yeah. um, and not be defensive about that. Yep. Um, so, but be careful who you ask. Yeah, you that's know, right. You You'll to, get you, for real. <laughs> different you, types of feedback. You get different types of feedback according to who you ask. Yeah. Um, so also be mindful and be prayerful about who you're going to ask for that feedback too, um, cause that's valuable. Yeah. And I think dating in the context of friendships, of mutual friendships and dating a person in a way that the people in your life get to know them and you get to know the people in their life 
is so important because you'll be able to get some of that feedback. Your friends yeah. will be able to get to know them. Get them around and your then, people. And then also see how they are with your people. Yeah. Do they respect your people? Do, do, they, um, do they love the people and care for the people that you love? Is yeah. it, does that matter to them? Um, think about family. You know, the, How do they treat your family? How do they talk about their family? Um, those are all important things that you have to consider asking that question. What do the people who know and love me the most think of this person or this relationship that's so good hey listen we hope that this even though this was a short conversation there's like tons more to talk about yeah um we're gonna cut it off right now in order to just have compact you know episodes for you to be able to listen to wherever yeah. whenever um but we're we're interested in your feedback so if this was helpful for you uh leave us a review on um, City Rev Life podcast, rate the podcast. Yeah. Let us know if this is an, a topic that interests you, want to learn more. Um, that would be super, super helpful. We are so glad that you joined us today. Justin, is there um, anything else that you would want to add to this or yeah. a song you want to sing? or No songs. Okay. I'm sorry, Shania. I tried, no I tried you guys. You tried again. But I just say, listen, if you found the person that you admire and care for, there's like this friendship, deep connection with them. And you see God at work in their lives. They're living to follow Jesus. And the people who know you the best and love you the most and who love Jesus affirm what's happening in your relationship, then I'd say you found a great person to consider marrying and committing to spending the rest of your life with. That mission ambition, as Mandy put it, uh, their character and the input of others. Those are some key questions to ask. Yeah, super good. Yeah. Hey, City Rev, we love you and we cannot wait to see you next time. Thank you for joining us on City Rev Life. You can subscribe to this podcast, rate and review wherever you're listening to this. And we love it when you share it with your friends on social media. For more videos and content, go ahead and check us out at cityrev.org podcast or download our City Rev Church app. Have a great day.